Furious Driving, proud to be supported by Diamond Bright, protecting, cleaning and caring for the Furious fleet and for yours with 10% off using code FD10. Follow the links in the description Hello below. Hello and welcome to Furious Driving and it's only a few days until the NEC Classic Motor Show up in Birmingham. It's Monday today so only five days until you'll be able to come and say hello and see us on the stand. Myself, Ian from Hubnut, Steph from My Driver Classic will be in Hall 3. Steph will have her marina which is coming back from the dead. Ian I think is bringing Giselle his Citroen GSA and the big question in my lips has been what am I going to take because I've had a few options. I'm kind of blessed with too many choices of cars which is a nice place to be most of the time. My plan was to bring the Alpha 145 Cloverleaf because it's an astonishingly rare car. was probably going to be the only Alpha 145 in the entirety of the entire show. However it needs a clutch and um, well, a couple of things have conspired to mean that's not the choice after all. Couldn't get it booked in to go Italia in time because just too much stuff going on. It was actually kind of a blessing in disguise because unfortunately the last three video reviews I've put out have absolutely tanked. So I don't know why people don't want to watch a Renault Frigat, which is an astonishingly rare, very beautiful, weird French car, or me driving a non-synchro mesh center throttle 1920s truck or even the mercedes clk normally those videos i thought were done quite well and paid for the clutch because the way youtube works is you put a video out it pays some money then you can do the next project none of those three videos were popular so luckily the car wasn't booked in because there's no money to pay for it so move on to choice number two and that came down to a flip up between the freelander which is interesting and popular on the channel but maybe a bit too new or this, the 200 VI, which I think is another one that's likely to be one of the only ones in the entire show, which is kind of what I want to do. But before we take it, there's a couple of things that need to be done. As, oh, the Rover V8. I forgot to mention the V8. That was option number four. But as I looked around that car to start seeing, is that potentially going to be ready in a week, having got it home last week from the year in being fixed? Yeah, no, no, there's too much to do. There's lots, of, even the accelerator cable isn't connected, the choke cable isn't connected, the wings aren't on. It needs the underwings uh, sorting out with you know, rust proofing and there's a little hole I found. I need to weld that. Uh, millions of things. So this one I'm just doing. But yeah, first of all, I need to sort out the driver's window because you know how you should never put a window down when it's frosty out and there's all frost on the glass. I know that, everyone knows that. Unfortunately, you don't always think when you do things and I just push the button and the window mechanism leisurely drifted into the door and the glass stayed put and since last spring, I've not I've been able to open that window. I need to fix that and secondly, because I don't know what the weather's gonna be like, Birmingham is the north from here. It's probably got wolves and stuff. So I'm gonna underseal this thing with some more built Hambry black stuff to make it rust proof and safe. And also give it a really good wash and polish for the first time in a little while. We got a lot of Saharan sand rain over here. It's horrible. Now before I start doing the outside of the car and the mechanical work, I'm going to quickly give the interior a spruce up, then I can start dumping stuff that I've got in the house into the car. I've brought the, the tables and things over from the barn. They're very much in the way. Ultra glass, fantastic stuff for the windows, obviously. And this stuff, interior trim enhancer, amazing. You should have seen the state of the Freelander before I started cleaning it up for our summer holiday in it. Um, because I'd never actually cleaned the interior on that car in the year I'd had it, and it'd been used as a uh, hunting car before, so it was um, disgusting. And this thing, it, it came up like new. It looked absolutely stunning. So this will also look very beautiful indeed. Having, oh, it smells like bananas as well, which is very pleasant. So anyone glancing in the window will be suitably impressed with the state of this lovely little car. The only issue I have with taking this car, and the reason this wasn't the first choice, because it is incredibly rare, and it's lovely to drive, and the radio works, which is always a bonus, um, is that it's not very big. It is quite a little car. It was um, a, sh a platform that was shrunk down from the previous R8. The R3 is the same at the front, more or less, underneath, but the rear end is significantly reduced in size. Well, do you know what I do now feel? I'm something of an expert when it comes to Rover doors and door cards and their removal of because I seem to have done so many of them over the last year or two. Oops. Also an expert at dropping the screws and occasionally finding them. This one, because it's a top spec car, has got a tweeter up here as well. Fancy. Twiddle that thing out and find the rest of the screws which all are located around the perimeter. Now I have had this door card apart before, amusingly. I say amusing, it's not that funny. It's surprising how little there actually is holding a door card on when you, you think about it. So like four or five screws and a couple of clips. Now this is the bit I don't like doing because you've got to take this little panel out 
from the centre of this door card and it's already been marked by previous attempts from other people. Every time I do it, it does make a fresh mark. That's not even a very good screwdriver for this, it's bent. We've got two big screws, the main screws basically, lurking in here. I can see them, they're a funny angle. Now we just need our trim tools to go and pry this thing off the door. Get all the screws out. There we go. Just a matter of finding the right point and then off it should lift. There we go. Ta-da! Job done. This though, I don't think should be detached. Um, okay, there we go. I can see it now. Yeah, that should be, how can I put this? Not broken. And my eight millimeter really has taken a hammering the last few days in various jobs. But first of all, I'll slacken that off, slacken that off. Now I'll take that out and find something I can make that shape, drill a hole in the bottom and just bracket it in there because finding these is getting harder and harder. How about an offcut of Crown Victoria um, in a sill? Because it's thick enough metal to be strong enough. I've already put the, the swage crimp thing into it so it'll cut in there or bend in and clamp the glass. I just need to cut that into the right shape. How lucky is that find? It was just on the floor over there. Brilliant. Right, so that is now out of the door. That is drilled and already the right shape. That will then sit whoops, up like that, clamp it all in place, and we've got ourselves a new clamp that will save the door. I'll quickly satin black this because it looks nice at least. Thank you, lovely electric tools, making life so easy. I've kind of chamfered all the edges and taken the burrs and things off. Actually, there's a little bit of a burr still there. So that if future me puts my hand inside the door to do stuff, I won't be injuring myself on it. Well, these brackets aren't unobtainium, but they are a bit expensive for what they are. And I'm pretty sure this is a replacement already, so they're not exactly the toughest things in the world either. But having replaced it once, I now know what I'm doing. And I now know also, oh, that's why there's tape on it, because it falls off when you're trying to assemble it. That would be a good reason for tape. So I just need to pop everything in. I used my um, hot air gun as well, just to get this thing dried off a bit more quickly. Otherwise you're sitting there waiting forever for it to, to dry off. Okay. Do you know what? I haven't wax oiled the inside this door. I'm sure I had. Now, let's see if I hopefully can do the other side as easily as this one. Because the axis is quite good this side. Well, fortunately for this side, unfortunately for the other side. Yes, it does go up as it is intended. That's good. Now, can I take it down again? Yay, so with that one clamp, it does kind of work to a certain extent. A bit wibbly, so we need to figure out how to get to the other one. If I could even see it. I figured it out. It's not broken this side. What is problem is that it's jumped out of it. So I need to undo this end again, lift it and drop it back in again. That's a relief. I'm going to make a second bit of metal. If you think it's hard to see, imagine how much fun it is going to be trying to get a socket in there. But it must be possible because I've done it before. This is exactly as easy as it looks. Right, window is fixed. We have now repaired a window using an angle grinder, which is probably an unusual thing to say. Um, as you can see from a little dollop of black on the floor, I have put um, cavity wax inside the door. Uh, so it will hopefully not rot in the future and plenty of new gaffer tape to tape the thingy back on there. Let's get the cover back on and then we can go underneath the car. Right, here we are outside the car, and quite unusually for one of my projects, uh, we've got some flaky underseal, but no actual holes. I mean, God, can you believe it? So I'm gonna get the flaky underseal off, because I don't want any holes to appear, put some fresh underseal on this, and also carry on under the car once it's jacked up a little bit. Hurrah! Now I've actually been kind of putting this job off for ages because the plan's always been to paint this entire side of the car. It's a little bit crusty down here, but not too bad. But the thing is, it's getting to another winter and it's not gonna be going to the body shop before the winter, so let's get this thing protected. I need gloves and eyewear. Uh, I need PPE. Kids, don't grind without gloves, which is probably something.
Oh, you. Well, oh, you're a naughty, naughty little grinder. Because I took a little grind at the back bit, as you just saw, and uh, looked kind of okay. So I put some uh, rust neutralizer killer stuff on it just to be ready. I thought oh, it was a couple of little blistery bits of, uh, or bubbling, I should say, parts of the underseal down here. I will quickly just get the grinder on them so I can underseal that as well. Never. I mean, never take any kind of scab if you see one, because it just never ends well, does it? It wouldn't be a furious driving video if I wasn't doing some unexpected extra rusting I'd counted on, but you know, here it is. Here is the unexpected extra welding. And here is me thinking that just doing a little bit of a window repair wasn't enough content for this video. Now, I'm aware that this is, ironic is the wrong word here, but exactly the same situation I was in last NEC with the Rover 420 Tourer, which, uh, yeah, that one had a massive great hole in exactly the same place. Or was that just for the MOT? Anyway, that one was full of holes too. Um, it seems to be the same place they all seem to go. 10 seconds later update, I uh, cut out the kind of rough square shape and started grinding around the edge so I wouldn't set fire to the car. And guess what? Found more, because there's always blooming more. Well, it's lucky I've had a fair bit of practice because this is a bit of metal I've got to quickly whack into that hole while it's getting darker and darker around me. It doesn't look too dark on camera because the camera's quite good at compensating, but it's actually half past four and it's freezing cold and horrible and dark. This is, of course, exactly how I like to be doing this kind of thing, but it's lucky I've had plenty of practice recently. I was getting the worst welds I have ever done and I couldn't figure out why it was just doing nothing, splattery, melty, just horribleness. I ran out of gas. Ah, oh, what a time to run out of gas. This is ridiculous. So I guess I'm going to pack this all up tonight and come back into this tomorrow morning. Fortunately, it's Tuesday. I've got all of Wednesday. I say all of Wednesday. I'm working in the morning. I've got Wednesday afternoon to try and get this buttoned up. Otherwise, we're taking the 75 or the Freelander or the Volvo or something else that's not this poor car. Right, well at least I'll go inside now because it's kind of chilly. Right, it's tomorrow and if you're playing furious driving bingo right now then you're probably in line for a full house because well ticking every single box, unexpected rust, tool failure, running into the next day, got more stuff but it's tipping with rain and it's really cold so yeah, <laughs> looking like a fun day on the tools here. Um, honestly right now the chances of the Freelander making it instead of the Rover 200 are increasing by the minute because, um, yeah, I don't know if you can see the rain actually landing on the car. It's, it's coming down hard and like properly, properly hard. So even though I've got the thing jacked up again, I had to move it for the night so Mrs. Furious could park. Um, that's her one stipulation. People often say, uh, does your wife mind all these cars? And her one thing that she says is, as long as I can park, I don't mind. Um, and so I had to move it out in the middle of the drive so she could move her car in. Um, at the moment, yeah, yeah I'm, not, I'm not doing any welding. I have had a brief glance at the other side and what I thought was just, you know, rough looking under seal looks exactly the same as the driver's side did. So I'm not going anywhere near that. I'm leaving that well alone because I'm sure that's gonna be exactly the same. I'm gonna hope that this will clear up and give me a break in the next hour or so and I can crack back in. Currently, by the way, for time reference, it's Wednesday. Setup day for the show, the NEC, is Thursday. So the clock is very much ticking. This is not manufactured peril, this is actual peril. And Steph is getting some stuff printed up for the stand. So I've had to get her to print some, uh, what do you call it, contingency uh, materials in case a different car other than this one goes. Because although this is still completely drivable and everything, I'm not sure I'm happy taking a car with a big hole in the floor and sharp edges into a stand where there's gonna be loads of people and kids and stuff. Even if I do cover it in gaffer tape, which is also an option. Four hours later. Sad face here, rain has very much stopped play. There was a lull in the rain briefly, and so I went out and of course the lulling stopped lulling as quickly as it had started and soon it was just chucking it down once again and I was lying under the car and I spent a good couple of hours getting absolutely drenched lying under that thing trying to weld in a fairly simple oblong 
piece of metal, but it just wouldn't do it. It was horrible, splattery welds, no penetration through the steel or just evaporating the steel. I kept on tweaking and messing around with the settings on the welder. I kept on grinding new earth points to try and make a better place for the, um, the, the welder to earth onto the car, but it wouldn't get any better. Eventually, I thought this is ridiculous. So I cut off the original square that I cut, cut a slightly larger hole cleaned all that up area and made a bigger panel to put into it and kind of the same thing happened again I got a few slightly better welds but not a lot and it's, it's embarrassingly bad to be perfectly honest I couldn't figure it out got new gas got a good earth um, nice and tight maybe the wind's too strong for the gas then I moved the welder slightly and there's a clunky noise and then I noticed this the little plug the valve that goes into the bottle of gas had broken and I tried fixing it with insulation tape and it turns out even insulation tape coupled with gaffer tape isn't enough to hold that together so what I'm gonna be looking for up at the NEC um, this weekend is a new one of these little things here I don't even know the name for it so I'll be going around the um, tool sites trying to find one this isn't part of the Draper welding kit thing is now do I risk taking a car with a really horrible shabby weld up for everyone to go and look at at the NEC or just leave this parked here take the Freelander which has got other shabby welding for people to look at instead. Um, I'm kind of embarrassed at it because you know, I've kind of got to a point of my welding is actually quite presentable, but that is just horrible. But that's basically because I was doing no gas welding, which is, doesn't really work unless you've got the special gasless wire, which I haven't. So yeah, I have to do some hard thinking tonight. Do I want to put my terrible welding on show to the world with the 200 VI, which is a brilliant car otherwise, and hope people don't notice, or do I go and switch this one out for the Freelander? Hmm. Let me know in the comments what you prefer to see because maybe that can influence things as well. Anyway, as always, like, subscribe, and I'll see you on Friday, Saturday, or Sunday up at the NEC for the Lancaster NEC Classic Motor Show, yada, yada, yada. If you want to get a discount on your tickets, head to the link in the description below, uh, which gives you a couple of quid off your entry price if you follow that link. Right, thank you. Like and subscribe, and I'll see you at the weekend, maybe. Mm -hmm.